hey welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be wrapping up the books that i was able to read in april and that is mostly just my owls that i read and my book club book but um funnily enough as to be expected with me i ended up basically changing my entire owls tbr because i was just so overloaded because i ended up adding two like 800 page books that i didn't expect or plan for and so I ended up changing to whatever audiobooks I could find <laughs> and things that were just easy. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I read and how I did on the owls. So I'm going to be consulting my reading journal because I can't remember what I rated stuff and how many pages and all that. So for the owls, I chose the librarian as my career. Um, which means I needed to get five owls. I needed to get Agent Runes, Arithmancy, Defense Against the Dark Arts, History of Magic, and Transfiguration. And I'm happy to report that somehow I was able to get them all, so I will be ready for the newts. <laughs> I'm so excited. So yeah, the first um, book I'm going to talk about is for my Ancient Runes Owl, and the prompt for that was Heart Rune, Heart on the Cover, or In the Title. So originally I was going to read Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson because I have that already on my Kindle and I've had it forever, but uh, by the time I got to that book I was just so burnt out that I was like, I just need an audiobook, I just need something easy that I can listen to in just a few hours. So I went and consulted that um, sheet spreadsheet again that G had put together for everyone to be able to um, suggest books to fit the prompts and I saw that there was a Christina Lauren book on there that had hearts all over it which was um, the uh, Honey Don't List and that happened to be on script and I happened to be able to listen to it all in just a few hours so yeah I read that book and I ended up rating it two and a half stars um, it was fine I don't think it was great I don't think I don't like romance very much and I didn't particularly like these characters and I don't think that a lot of stuff really happened in the story like I don't know it did not feel fully fleshed out but I think that I liked how little smut there was in it because that's just not really my thing that's not you know that's just not why I would I read um and there's no shame if you do love that I'm here for all kinds of books and all kinds of readers but I was really hoping to like it more um but from what I've read this is not one of their best books um so I'm definitely gonna still try again with the unhoneymooners I've only heard good things about that whereas this one the people who love that book weren't so keen on this one so I'm not gonna give up on Christina Lauren yet the next book that I read was for my arithmetic owl and the prompt for that was magical qualities of the number two which is balance and opposites read something outside of your favorite genre so I could have pretty much read anything that wasn't like high fantasy but I wanted to go like way outside because I've had a couple of like books that I've been interested in for a while and I just knew I wasn't ever gonna get around to them because they weren't a priority um, so I wanted to do romance and for that I went with get a life Chloe Brown Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and I also listened to that on an audiobook on script. It was actually the first book that I read this month. I think I read it like the first day of April and um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. Um, I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the chronic pain and, and illness rep. I enjoyed um, disability rep and I enjoyed the plus size rep. I just thought it was really realistic and um, I gave it three stars because once again some of the loving smutty scenes just I don't know they made me a little cringy they weren't awful or anything um they weren't you know the worst I've ever read by any means but uh you know I, I still thought it was an enjoyable book a lot of people recommended it who also aren't huge into to romance and um they were right I thought I think it's a good place to start if you're not a romance reader um but yeah like I said um, I gave it three stars the next book I needed for my uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts Owl, and that was the prompt Grindylow's book set at the sea or the coast. 
for that I read Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare which is the first in the Dark Artifices series and I read that with my sweet friend Kayla over at Literature Reads. Um, I will link her channel down as well. She's amazing and um, I'm glad that she invited me to read this with her because I probably wouldn't have picked it up. I haven't read a Cassandra Clare book in so long since the um, Infernal Devices wrapped up because that's my favorite series by her and um, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I went into it not expecting a lot um, because I just I'm not a fan of Clary and Jace so I didn't expect to be a fan of Emma and Julian but I surprisingly did not hate Emma. I don't know how I feel about her yet. I think she's okay. Um, I do like Julian though. Um, the end of the book was kind of crazy, kind of threw me for a loop. I'm obviously going to keep reading because of that but um, I really like Julian. I kind of just want the best for him. He's had it, he's had it tough. Um, there were some weird things about the book. Um, the biggest like pet peeve for me was um, how they treated the seven-year-old, the youngest of the Blackthorns, like he's a literal toddler. Um, like I have a 10-year-old and she's basically a teenager and when she was seven she was, I don't know, I didn't carry her around and like, I don't know. They haven't said like he is, you know, he's not as, I don't know, emotionally developed or mentally developed as other seven-year-olds so I assumed that they would just treat him like you would normally treat a seven-year-old but it was strange um it was really weird it kept that just kept bothering me i was like she clearly does not have kids because nobody treats their seven-year-olds like this um but i did really like the um autism rep with ty um i don't think they ever actually explicitly say autism but um that's very obviously what they are what she is trying to get across but um i thought they did a good job um you know, they definitely made sure not to other him, and um, I think Ty's a really good character, and I'm interested to see where he goes and what he does. But yeah, I ended up giving this book three and a half stars. Um, I'm hopeful that I'll give the other two maybe four. I don't, I can't say that I'm going to give them five because to me, nothing's going to top uh, Clockwork Princess. It's the perfect Cassandra Clare book, and yeah. The good thing about this is that you do get to see Tessa, and you do get to see Jim. And that's good. Um, I really got tired of them talking about Clary and Jace, though. Like, it's like, yeah, we get it. We read those books. Like, I, yeah, I don't care about them anymore. I don't want to hear about them anymore. Um, that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people like them. The next book that I read was for my History of Magic prompt. And that is, I mean, for my History of Magic Owl. And the prompt for that is Witch Hunts. Um, a book featuring witches and wizards and for that one I decided to do um, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The illustrated version I tried to focus on but I also have the audiobook of that so yeah I, that's a reread obviously I've read that book so many times it's always going to be five stars. I love it it's one of my favorites. Um, I'm not going to tell you what that's about because it's the third book and if you somehow haven't read it you should and it's wonderful. And the last book that I needed for my owls was for Transfiguration and the prompt for that was Animagus Lecture, a book series that includes um, shapeshifting. So for that is another one that I did not <laughs> fully anticipate on reading that was also very long and that was um, Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Math. Um, this is kind of all over booktube right now. I'm actually kind of late to the game because I checked this out from the library um, in the middle of March and then of course all this stuff happened and my library's been closed down since. So they said, please just keep your books, you know, if you have them, we'll accept them when we open back up. So I've had it for over a month and I just finished it because honestly, it was just so long. I thought it was gonna kill me trying to get through it. I. I didn't know if I was gonna make it and you know the first like 200 pages are just so heavy on information they're just you just feel like she's just dumping this world on you without any backstory it just doesn't make sense and you're supposed to care about these characters but you don't because you don't know them yet and I don't know I really don't like Hunt honestly I didn't really like Bryce that much um it just felt very Sarah J Mass character to me like they're all interchangeable with all of her other 
male and female protagonist. Um, Bryce could have easily been Feyre or Selena, and, and you know they're always the best and the most powerful and secretly it's really them that are the chosen ones and I don't know. And also everything was really convenient and nothing felt like, <sighs> this is the same kind of thing I felt with her um, Court of Thorns and Roses series, nothing ever felt really dangerous like you nothing important was really lost like no no one we really cared about or that they really really cared about nothing really happened to them um so that kind of bothered me mostly just that it was such a slog i think i finally like started being like oh, okay i'm act actually i'm a little invested i want to finish reading this at around page like 500 or 550 um that's ridiculous that means that this book is too long and it should have been edited. I, I like Sarah J Mass as a person. I've met her. She's very kind and sweet and I, I think she's a precious person. But uh, yeah, um, her editor needs to be talked to because just because she's Sarah J Mass doesn't mean that she doesn't need to be edited. We all need to be edited. I don't know if I said I may have three out of five stars and honestly I'm just not really 100% sure even how I feel. Is it a three star book if I didn't even care really until like 55% through? I, I don't know. So maybe two and a half, maybe three. That's just where I am right now. And the very last book that I read for the month of April um, was for my book club that we are meeting tomorrow on Zoom to discuss um, the book Calypso by David Sedaris and I've read most of David Sedaris's books I've been a big fan of his for a long time and if you don't know he writes um, funny um, biographical essays so all of his books contain a bunch of essays I think this one had like 20 something um, it's a really short book I listened to it and read along with it um, all in three hours and I just like him I think he's funny I already know a lot about him because like I said I've read most of his books where he talks about his life and growing up and this one dealt a lot with um life after you know the death of his sister and uh, about dealing with his dad who's like a, a Trump Republican and if you know anything about David Sedaris <laughs> He is not um but I just like him as a person I think he's funny um I was kind of annoyed by how mean Hugh is made out to be. I don't know if he really is. I don't know if it was just him being funny. Um, but I was like, why are they together? They they hate each other. Um, Hugh is like his longtime boyfriend, by the way. But um, yeah, I ended up giving Calypso four out of five stars. And I'll probably give anything <laughs> that he writes at least four stars because I just, I enjoy it. But yeah, those are all the books that I was able to read in the month of April. I'm really excited that even though I completely changed my um, TBR around from the video that I posted, I was still able to successfully complete my very first um, Owl's Magical Readathon. I've been watching it for three years and I'm excited to have finally been able to participate. I can't wait to do whatever um, round she does next. So yeah. Um, I really want to hear what you guys are reading. If you made a video, a wrap up, and I haven't already commented on it, please um, feel free to link it. I would love to watch it. I try to, you know, stay on top of my subscriptions, but, you know, I, I subscribe to a lot of booktube, so I might have missed it. But yeah, uh, if you want to talk about any of these books, if you felt the same or different, please comment or message me on Twitter. I would absolutely love to talk to you about it whatever you want to talk about um it can be animal crossing it can be books bts whatever um but yeah i so appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video and um yeah if you liked it please feel free to give it a thumbs up that would be very helpful for me and if you're new and you haven't subscribed um you can it would be super cool if you don't that's okay you know it's your prerogative <laughs> but uh yeah hopefully i'll see you guys next time bye